this year, Instagram posted a blog called Instagram Ranking Explained, sharing the most up-to-date information that we have on how exactly the algorithm works. So what's changed? What's different than before? This is the only video that you'll need to watch to understand the Instagram algorithm. That is until they post another blog in like two to three years. As always, timestamps are below because this is a jam-packed one. So use them if you're looking for something specific. First, we're going to make sure you have an understanding of what the algorithm is. Then we're going to dive into how each algorithm works. And then we'll wrap it up with the key differences that we need to point out between 2021's algorithm and this newest one. So let's get into it. So what is the algorithm? Instagram doesn't have a singular algorithm that oversees what people do and don't see on their app. Instead, they use a variety of algorithms depending on which part of the app you're on, feed, stories, explore, reels, etc. And all of these places have their own algorithm tailored to how people interact with that feature. How often does the algorithm change? All the time and very rarely, which Makes no sense at all, so let me explain. If you're on YouTube, like at all, and you watch videos here, you probably notice a new Instagram update of their algorithm video like every two seconds. And that's because every algorithm is unique to the person that's interacting with it. So if you, as a user, change how you interact with a part of Instagram, you might start noticing new patterns and behaviors from Instagram. So that's why you have a bunch of people making these videos like, Oh my gosh, the algorithm updated again, you know? Your unique algorithm is always changing depending on what posts you like, don't like, what stories you watch and don't watch and swipe through. Like the Instagram algorithm is always changing. So the next time you see a video like that pop up on your YouTube page, don't freak out because the actual foundations of what the algorithms look for doesn't change often, okay? like. Instagram headquarters isn't going in every day like, okay, let's make sure reels are performing 75% better than in-feed posts today. Oh, tomorrow, let's change it and let's make sure that photos perform better than reels. And then, ooh, let's not show this person's story. Like, they're not going in every day and changing the basis of what the algorithm is looking for. Like, the last two times we had an update for the algorithm was 2021, when they posted their article, Shedding Light on How Instagram Works. And then after that, sometime late 2022, early 2023, when Adam Masseri went to Instagram, he was like, okay, we've gone too far into video. We understand that. We're gonna take a step back and let the user decide what type of feature is gonna be on their feed. That was the last big change and update. So now that we have this article, we have the most up-to-date understanding and foundation of how the algorithm is currently working and will probably continue to be until we get the next big update. Does that, does that make sense? Like we're probably chilling on this algorithm basis for a good few months to maybe year or two. Basically to sum up how often the algorithm changes. If user behavior changes, the algorithm follows user behavior. For example, if Instagram users as a whole all of a sudden start just loving reels, reels are gonna pop up more because that's what the algorithm's identifying. If all of a sudden as a community, everybody is ignoring reels and going leaning into like story posts or going live, that's what the algorithm is gonna push. The algorithm identifies a user behavior and then follows it. So the four main algorithms we're actually going to break down today are feed, stories, explore, and reels. And for all of this information, I am going to be using their blog post that I mentioned at the beginning of the video to describe all of these algorithms and how they work. So it's not just me making this up. It's literally what Instagram says word for word, just breaking it down for you to understand. First, let's talk about your feed. Right now, there are three feed views. You have following, favorite, and default. When you switch to the following feed, you will see most recent posts from the people that you follow, meaning these posts will show up in chronological order. When you switch to the favorite feed, you will see the latest from accounts that you chose to be your favorite. Now default is the main view that you see when opening up your Instagram app. When you're on the default feed, the algorithm will suggest posts that it thinks you will like based on multiple factors. So Basically, Instagram describes your feed as being a place 
to help you catch up with friends, family, and interests. Now, how do they know who your friends and families are or who, what your interests are? They use something called signals. There are thousands of signals that Instagram uses for all of their algorithms. For example, information about the post itself, information about the person who made the post, what your preferences are, who you follow, the content you like, the time a post was shared. Are you using your phone or web browser? Do you engage more with reels, with photos? Like there's thousands of signals that Instagram uses. Now, when it comes to feed, the most important signals roughly in order of importance are your activity, information about the post, information about the person who posted and your history of interacting with someone. With your activity, they're looking at posts that you've liked, shared, saved, or commented on in the past to help them understand what sort of content you might be interested in. From there, they're looking at information about the post. Ranges from how the post is doing engagement wise. So how many people have liked it, how quickly people are liking, commenting, sharing, and saving a post, but also more mundane information like about the content itself. What is it about? When was it posted? What location is attached to it? Thirdly, information about the person who posted, this will help them get a sense for how interesting that person might be to you. So they'll look at signals like how many times you've interacted with that person over the last few weeks, and which kind of goes into the fourth one being your history of interacting with someone. If you have a history of interacting with somebody, they'll be able to gauge if you're interested in seeing more regularly from a particular person. If you guys are commenting on each other's posts more frequently, you'll probably pop up on each other's feeds. After analyzing all those signals from there, Instagram will try to predict how likely you are to engage with a post. So for in feed, the five interactions that they look at most are how likely you are to spend a few seconds on a post, comment on it, like it, share it, and tap on that person's profile photo. The more likely they think you are to take those actions, the higher they're going to rank a post in your feed. If you see a post on your feed and you're like, why did Instagram recommend this to me? Why is this being pushed on my feed? You can see the algorithm in action by pressing on the three dots in the top right corner of that post and then selecting why you're seeing this post. Instagram will be transparent and tell you exactly what triggers they were looking at and why they predicted you to engage with that one. Before jumping into the stories algorithm, I wanna say a huge thank you to this video sponsor, Metricool. If you've been subscribed to me for any time over the past year and a half, two years, you know that Metricool holds a dear place in my heart. If you don't know what Metricool is, they are the all in one social media tool, social media scheduler that I highly, highly, highly recommend for anybody who's trying to post to multiple platforms. You can take a short form video, schedule it to auto post to Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok with just like one click of a button. Metricool is great for like anyone <laughs> looking to organize their content. Content creators, entrepreneurs, businesses. It's of course a great all in one tool, but they're also a really, really great resource for social media studies. So recently in September, I believe they posted this blog post, social media research study, where they studied Instagram for 2023. The study was based on an analysis of over 316,000 professional Instagram accounts, over 2 million posts, 9 million stories, and 1 million reels. So they studied a bunch of content types to pull together a bunch of data, data, whatever you wanna call it, trying to give you the best information of like, okay, these posts are performing great right now. This is the best time to post. And all those other questions that if you're a strategic person or analytical thinker, this is a really great blog post for you to reference. So if you're interested in trying out Metricool, it is completely free for content creators. So you can use the link down below. If you're a business and you juggle multiple Instagram accounts, multiple TikTok accounts, or multiple Facebook accounts, then you could use my code for a free trial. Thank you so much Metricool for sponsoring this video and let's jump into the stories algorithm. Next is ranking for stories. Instagram describes stories as a way to share everyday moments and grow closer to the people and interests you care about. I feel like I should like interpretive dance all of these quotes that I'm pulling from the blog. 
Maybe the next one I will. The most important signals for stories, roughly in order of importance, are viewing history, engagement history, and closeness. Viewing history looks at how often you view a specific account's stories so that Instagram can prioritize those stories from accounts they think that you don't wanna miss. Engagement history looks at how often you engage with an account's stories, such as liking a story or sending them a DM. And closeness looks at your relationship with the creator overall, how likely you are to be connected as friends or family, studying things like, are you guys DMing often? Based on those signals, Instagram will again, make a prediction about what they think the stories you will find more relevant and valuable. So how likely you are to tap into someone's story, how likely you are to reply to someone's story, or even to skip and move on to the next one. Next is ranking for explore. So Instagram says that explore was designed to help users discover new things. So the explore grid, this is made up of recommendations that Instagram has gone out to find for you. Meaning that 99.999% of the content you see there, probably not from people that you follow. So how does Instagram pick which posts show up there? They do this in two steps. First, they have to define the type of content that they wanna show. And then when they know, okay, we wanna show this type of content, they'll rank that content based off of how likely you are to engage with it. So the first step, to find photos and videos that you're more likely interested in, the important signals that they look at, roughly in order of importance, are information about the post, your activity in Explore, your history of interacting with the person who posted, and information about the person who posted. For information about the post, here, this is where Instagram is looking at how popular a post seems to be. So signals like how quickly people are liking on it, commenting, sharing, saving, those signals of how quickly engagement is happening on a post matter so much more for pushing something into Explore than it does for your feed and stories. Next, they're gonna look at your activity in Explorer in the past. What type of content have you liked, saved, shared, or commented on in Explore in the past. And if you interact with a specific type of post, they try to show you more content similar to the original post that you interacted with. Third, your history of interacting with the person who posted. Most likely the post that you're seeing might not be from somebody you follow, but if you've interacted with them in the past and you haven't followed them yet, it'll give them a sense of how likely you are to be interested in their content. And then finally, information about the person who posted. Who are they? What kind of content do they post? Even signals like, how many times people from across Instagram have interacted with that person in the past few weeks? If it's a lot of people interacting with them, that's gonna tell Instagram that there might be some compelling content there for them to push to explore. This is kind of a lot of information, so let me break down two things. One thing that's important to understand is because Instagram has a large number of interest focused accounts based on specific themes, they've actually built their algorithm to identify account embeddings to help them efficiently identify which accounts are topically similar to each other. So that was kind of a big mumbo jumbo words, but basically Instagram categorizes people's accounts topically. And then based off of the topic of the content they're posting, it's easier for them to identify, oh, this person posts about books, so I'm gonna refer this account who also posts about books. So they create account embeddings to identify one specific topic of a creator's account, which is why it's so important to like niche down on Instagram in the first place. Let me say an example. Let's say that you've recently liked photos from Barnes and Noble, right? Their Instagram account, you've engaged with a bunch of their content. Instagram is then going to go to Barnes and Noble's profile. They're gonna look at their photos. They're gonna look at the people who interact with those photos. And if Sally has also liked that photo, they're gonna be like, what? Other photos has Sally liked? Oh, Sally actually liked a photo from Book of the Month. So the next time you open your Explore page, there might be book content there from Book of the Month because somebody who liked similar content as you liked another photo of, from an account that you didn't follow and da 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 da. Did I explain that okay? <laughs> Hopefully that was full circle explanation. If you're a content creator and you're just like struggling with having the algorithm work for you and you want to hack into the algorithm and get your content to perform better, you want to, you're like, okay, I want to take Instagram seriously. I want to grow 10,000 followers, make a thousand dollars in the next 100 days. I do have a free training for you, completely free, 60 minutes in depth. It's called your Instagram 100 day roadmap. This is the exact path that I would follow day by day, like day one, this is what I would do. Day two, this is what I would do. Like 
step-by-step step what I would do if I was starting from zero. So I will link the free masterclass and free training down below. You can take that if you're like, okay, I wanna hustle, I wanna start growing on Instagram, what do I need to do? How do I work with the algorithm instead of against it? it it's a must watch, it is a must watch, so I'll link that down below. Next we have ranking for reels. Instagram defines the reels feature as designed to help you discover new things, with an emphasis on entertainment. So much like Explore, the majority of what you see on your Reels tab will be from accounts that you don't follow. So they go through a very similar process as Explore to source Reels that they think you will be interested in. The predictions though, of like, okay, how likely you are to engage with the post are slightly different from the predictions of your Explore page. When they're ranking, the reels of an order of importance, they are trying to predict how likely you are to reshare a reel, watch a reel all the way through, like it, and then go to the audio page. If they think you're more likely to go to the audio of a specific reel because it's going to inspire you to create, they're gonna rank that reel pretty high on your reels tab. So the other important signals roughly in order of importance are your activity, your history of interacting with the person who posted, information about the reel, and information about the person who posted. Some of this is review, but for activity, they look at things like which reels you've liked, saved, shared, commented on, and engaged with recently. Those signals will help them understand what content might be relevant to you. Your history of interacting with the person who posted. Same thing with explore. You probably don't follow this person, but if you've interacted with them, they might rank their content a little bit higher. This one is interesting. So the third one was information about the reel. These are signals about the content within the video itself, such as the audio track, the audio, the visuals in the video, what the video is about, what the captions about, pop-up text. They look at all of that in addition to popularity and engagement of that reel, which leads into the fourth one, information about the person who posted. They consider popularity signals, such as number of followers or level of engagement to help find compelling content from a wide group of people and hopefully give everyone a chance to find their audience. Now that we understand each individual algorithm, let's talk about the differences from the 2021 algorithm blog post to the most recent 2023 algorithm blog post. So the first biggest change that we see between these two articles is feed and stories now have their own algorithms. So in 2021, the algorithm for feed and stories were the same algorithm. But as we can see in the 2023 article, feed has their own algorithm and stories have their own algorithm. The next difference was in the most recent blog, they are so much more transparent about the predictions that they are trying to make with each feature. So before they would just be like, we're gonna look at these four signals. From there, we're gonna predict the likelihood of you engaging with it but it's like, okay, but what does that mean? With Reels, they actually say like, we're trying to predict how likely you are to tap into an audio because we want you to be inspired to create. Like they're so much more transparent about what predictions they're trying to make for each category. Stories, how likely are you to reply to somebody's story, like somebody's story? And I just love that layered element. So now we could understand the most important actions to take on a specific feature. And another major shift that caught my eye was in their statement on shadow banning. So the 2023 blog post talks a lot about, we're building tools to help you understand why your content isn't getting reach and da da da, da we're working on it. We believe in transparency, blah, blah, blah. Like it's great, love that they're working on tools, hurrah. But what I found interesting wasn't necessarily about what they said, but more so about what they didn't say, what they took out. I should say. Because in the 2021 blog post, they said, we can't promise you that you'll consistently reach the same number of people when you post. The truth is most of your followers won't see what you share because most look at less than half of their feed. I am just so curious as to why they took that out. And I'm curious because I, I don't think they took it out because it was like, oh, people are viewing more of their feed now. It's, it's great, it's problem solved. I think they took it out because reach has been at like an all time low. And that statement just doesn't ring true anymore because I think people view less than half their feed. I think people are hardly scrolling through their feed and spending more time in stories or maybe more time in the reels tab. So that's my prediction, especially the metrical blog post that I mentioned earlier in this video, how they studied all the different types of content. 
they saw like a huge drop in reach this year. Like comparing last year's average reach to this year's average reach, there's been a huge drop of reach on content. And so I just found that really interesting. If you're a content creator or aspiring content creator, don't forget to subscribe to my channel hug the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification because you don't wanna miss when I post my next video. I plan to make a how to use the algorithm to your advantage as a content creator in the future. So make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy, bye.